Hello and welcome. Southwest Funding presents the Nick Hyde Memorial that's powered by Heiserbaum, driven by Innova. I'm Paul Uliberry. I'm joined by Nate Perkins, and we're bringing you first round coverage of the Nick Hyde Memorial. Let's do it, dude. This is our this is our fifth week in the Texas swing of this year's 2019 PDGA Disc Golf Tour. Um, you could have gone B tier in San Angelo, Waco, Belton, Texas States last week, and now we're up here in Rockwall, Texas, just outside of Dallas for an annual A tier event. The Nick Hyde's been going on for a few years, been bringing the best players around the world. And uh, we Gavin, did it. Gavin Newsom actually won the, the amateur Nick Hyde event a couple weeks back, and he's getting to get a shot with the with the big boys on the big stage. Absolutely. We saw Landon Knight, another local guy. Mm-hmm. Of course, Ricky Waisaki and Eagle McMahon. Everybody yeah. loves watching them. And we're getting starting off real quick. Hole one, par three, 377 feet. This is coming in as the second most difficult hole on the course. Wow, really? Yes. That's Which surprising. is very surprising. At 377 feet, you wouldn't expect that. But we did have a little bit of a right to left. And that wind just kind of pushes it left as it is with Eagle's Disc right now. And that's really the the danger of the hole right there. Right. It looked like he kind of caught a good break, actually, by hitting that and staying on the edge. He'll be able to lean out and probably do like a little sidearm upshot. This looks perfect. If he can get that penetrating that skip. skip. Yeah. Oh, my. I mean. Oh, wow. I didn't even know that you could get in high. Really. Yeah, me neither. I definitely went left, and then I had to do, like, super scramble skills to get out of trouble. On my first shot, like, this is exactly where I ended up. Oh, well, actually, that kind of so bad, yeah. yeah that kind of flipped up flat. Mine went hyzer way left down the hills. and Yeah, if you're, if you're left of that brush that, the, the, that Landon just fired into, it's, it's pretty rough up and down for you for a par. This is one thing that I really like that people wow, are not people this drive by Gavin to start. He kind of gets a bad perfect. break. Yeah. yeah. Great looking, great looking pull though. I know he's got to be feeling the nerves. Right. And that's what I was getting at that. I, I really like that tournament directors will have an am weekend and then they'll feature that player on one of these cards. I really think that's uh, a great idea. Yeah. And what it, what it does for, for, fans and, and, and viewers around is it kind of gives you some perspective. You know, we're all so used to, oh, no. <laughs> Did he? Oh, no. I don't want to, like, I don't know what happened. Did have he been mean to do dirty. that? It must have been bad. It looked like he, like, the branch kind of maybe caught it. Like, he wasn't even trying to throw it. Yeah. Oh, no. What? From 18 feet, Ricky gets the cage? So now we're seeing why it's the hardest hole. Yeah. Because there's, there's a force no field around it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think the cedar, the cedars down here in Texas might be some of the worst trees for disc golf. If you're in one of those cedars, it, it doesn't really get any worse as far as like having a, having a shot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So finish your thought about, um, yeah, I mean, it gives you having a, having a, you know, kind of a true amateur player on a card like this allows us to have a perspective, kind of the difference in skill. You know, we're all so used to seeing Rick and Eagle and and Paul up there and just birdie in all the holes. Yeah, so it's kind of nice to see someone that might not throw as far, might not hit as many putts and, and see the difference between the skills. Absolutely. That's a great point. Hole two, this one's a par four. 468 feet I really love this hole because it gives you so many options off the tee you're going to see that you have an option to go way a wide hyzer right Mm -hmm. and then there's actually a skinny gap excuse me right down the middle to go for it to go for the yeah yeah, go for the eagle too Um, so it's a very nice hole for risk reward and then after your drive you'll have this if you don't make the skinny gap you'll have kind of a tricky upshot with out of bounds right behind it and the slope green so and eagle eagle almost got that thing pin high he just kind of swung that cloud breaker out there and it just kind of glided all of 450 feet 
pretty amazing what he's doing with that with that disc this year. Yeah, it's it's really bizarre how far he can throw. Yeah. <laughs> anything. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when I I just I can't really take my eyes off him when he's playing because I just want to try and pick up what he's figured out, you know, backhand and 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 sidearm. Four. Oh, he was thinking maybe a kick. Yeah, off that tree, maybe but he, he was like looking at those people at the practice basket right there, but but he gets a nice. I mean, that was nice. Yeah, 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 he hit the he hit the Heiser gap for sure. And this looks like a nice approach from Landon. Needs some good reaction off the ground. Wow, that was nice. That looked really good. He'll have as long as he didn't roll, which it didn't look like the camera stayed on him. He should have 15, 20 feet. And here's what I'm saying: you can. It's a it's a quick green, especially coming backhand from right to left down that slope. If you don't land it a good 15 feet before, like you see Ricky doing here, and then he'll have that soft ground play, it can easily go in the water. Yeah, absolutely. It, it kind of filters down yeah, there. Yeah, he has like a putt with that wide hyzer. That's like impossible, yeah. guys. Yeah. I know that I was practicing it, and I was coming up a good oh, 200 feet short easy. Yeah, maybe not 200, but... I think but. so, but I was trying stable off out mm -hmm. of the gap because it makes the gap a little bit easier. I wasn't trying right. to flip something up. I want right. to get left, so he was able to get left with a power driver. Yeah, it's a special type of shot. It's not just a raw hyzer. There's there's a different kind of spin that he's putting on it to, to get it to even lift and, and glide out. So, <laughs> I hate to bring this up, but in Waco, we noticed that Jeremy had missed the belt loop. Oh man, what do we got today? What do you, what did you just know? Has... Did he miss the belt loop? <laughs> he has missed the belt loop. I don't know how I, <laughs> how I spot these things. This is but... fantastic. <laughs> oh, and, and both of those players are pretty fashionable players. Oh yeah. I mean, they Absolutely. look good on the course. Very good. And, and they, and they uh, really try. You know? They do. Yep. But you can throw 900 feet, but yeah. you can't, can't find that belt loop. <laughs> This one's tricky. You know, these par threes out here are are pretty tricky in the gold layout. 396, and there's there's actually a sidewalk long which which comes into to play for a lot of these players. And that's interesting that he actually went with a mid-range off the tee there. This is actually a really far hole. Yeah. Um it's not as far going down the middle. I was trying to go wide hyzer, like kind of where that uh um fire hydrant was well they and took then, that tree out and then over that with the wind yeah. but because in practice if you see yep. there's like a little bit of a dirt cluster right, right where there, his right disc where went over there, there was, was a, a tree seat. so i didn't practice down the middle yeah that's a good point there this so this harry myers just went through a major redesign i mean 17 16 out of the 18 holes are are completely new including this one and the city was really scrambling to get get things prepared for the tournament, and that's not really the best case scenario for players when they're practicing the course on Sunday, Monday before the event, and and then it changes actually during the tournament. I mean that tree. Oh, wow. What? The? You gotta be wow. kidding me. Look at him just spin that one. That's not even his normal putt. He totally adapted and just. It's still flying. <laughs> <laughs> That's the longest. <laughs> That's the longest wow, putt just... we might have seen all year, as far as as far as a putt goes, because Eagles pretty pretty long here too. <laughs> yeah, he just got big putted. What is he thinking? Oh, he wanted I it too. I just can't believe I wanted. I want to rewind this. Rewind, rewind to, the the double slow mess so that I can count the seconds that his putt was in the air. No doubt, that was a wow. special one, Ricky. Yeah, I mean, this basket's on a slight hill, and it definitely... So, this is an interest, interesting, pardon me, perspective, is he misses, barely misses. He was closer than Ricky, and now he has another 30 to 25-footer. If Ricky misses that putt, he's in the same situation. Exactly. And he just missed an 18-footer on the last hole. So, for him to, you know, have the courage to go <laughs> from it from there and make it is just honestly mind-blowing yeah yeah it's a testament to to his lack of fear for sure
04. 372 feet, pretty straightforward. Not a lot of danger on this one. It's slightly downhill. You can't see, you can't really see all of the pin. So that might allow, you know, some distance judgment issues for some of these players, but straight at 372 feet, we should see a couple of these Frisbees inside the circle. I like a hole like this because it really keeps you honest. You know, it's like everybody should have at that level, everybody should have that shot. Wow. And then actually there's a disc right there in the, in the little goalie, probably from the next hole, but we'll yeah. get to that in a second. That was interesting. Um, it keeps you honest. You have to be able to throw this shot. This is a lot of, uh, this is a distance of a lot of like really good par fours. This is your upshot. Mm -hmm. And so for them to make a hole to where you have to throw it dead straight with a little bit of control, I yeah. like it. But it is kind of a, it feels like a must get for this course. Yeah. Uh-oh, a little high from Landon. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of, for a lot of the top tier players, it's right in between a mid mm -hmm. and a fairway. Are you throwing a, you throwing a fairway on this one? I did in practice because it was, uh. A little bit windier but then when the round came I actually uh, toned down to a mid-range it kept me honest I did not get it <laughs> yeah so you you comment on that so you're you're taking it down to a mid-range is that so that you can you can throw it harder so in in practice I threw the fairway because it was actually slight headwind so I needed the extra juice to get it there and then in the actual round, there was actually mm -hmm. slight left to right crosswind, which I felt like could hold your mid range up and kind of have a softer landing. And I, I actually threw a pretty good shot. I just kind of pulled it a, a bit. But you see, these guys, the people who actually threw driver, went left, mm -hmm. and the mid range kind of held straight. Yeah. And I think that's kind of was in the back of my mind too. And that's a good uh, putt. that was just really clean. This is actually a lower basket. You can see. Um, kind of sunk down a bit. Kate and is a little messed up too. Yeah. <laughs> it's really unfortunate to see that at an A tier event. But it's nice to watch Eagle drop it in from about 40. I mean, it was effortless too. He didn't even jam that one in there like he normally does. Hole five, par three, 352 feet. And we had just talked about keeping you honest. And now if you throw a bad shot on this one, you're definitely a liar because this thing's gonna kick you straight left. There's a mandatory on the right. And if you hit early, it's almost impossible to get up and down just because the technicality of once you get through the gap, it has to be a specific shot. You see how small this gap looks. It's, tightest, tightest gap on the course. No. Yep. And, oh, no. and Ricky hits early. Luckily, he didn't kick left, so he'll have a similar shot to the green. But if he kicked right at all or left, you're it, done. It's almost an instant five if you kick right because you've got, wow. Oh, and it just that needed was a, to squeak that. Yeah, that was a foot away from being absolutely parked I, and ace run. I think that might have been might have been the new FD, too. I, I know he's really liking those. So the, he's done there. Yeah, he's, he's over. So if you actually kick right, your OB... You're in the Cedars, and there's there's another series of mandatories. So you're forced to go out that main gap. So this is a great shot by Landon. He throws that absolutely perfectly 20, 20 feet away. That's the best one I've seen so far. Yeah, yeah. I threw one that was an absolute perfect shot for, for me and my pow. Oh, dinner's ready. <laughs> <laughs> and I was 40 short, and I threw it perfect. So you, it's you it, throwing a forehand? I was, yeah. yeah. So it's a it's a pretty far forehand. Yeah, and this is not an easy up and down. I mean, it's a little windy on here on this green. He was Rick he was fortunate enough to have that kick kind of keep him on the edge yeah. to where it was it was actually kind of a fairly easy up shot for his kind of skills that he that Ricky has. And he pulls this one around a little bit. Maybe awkward footing, but I mean that's circle's edge. It's so impressive to me how Ricky and Eagle can can putt from that distance. Like I'm throwing at that distance. Yeah, it's, me too. It's a 
it's hard to even get the height. I mean, if I were to putt it, I, I would be really out of control and all kinds of different things could happen. Is that a spin thing? When Eagle's doing that, is that because he's able to, is like the wrist, the spin, or is it more legs? And I think it's all of it, yeah. I think, I think the fact that he has longer arms as well when he curls, it doesn't have to be as as sharp of a spinning motion with the mm -hmm. wrist. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the long arm kind of tilted back and then at the extension, his follow through is so good that um, I think that allows him to get that extra distance. Yeah, and you don't really think about like timing mattering on the putt like you do a drive, but it really does. The, 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 so body, the body weight timing, oh no. I mean, that was that was a little high, but that's that's like a 90-10. That should, that should stick nine times out of ten. Oh, yeah. It definitely should stick. But you have to have touch going into those short putts, and we know that about this course. So for years and years and years, I've been really frustrated with, like, spit outs and stuff. But I've also found out that you have to adapt in the rounds, you know, in the different situations. And these are older baskets. Like, if you hit them high... You can rewind that and watch Ricky putt it. He watches it the whole time because he knew he did a boo-boo. Yep, yep. You put know? it too fast, too yeah. high, yep. And then you you kind of got to watch it to be like, am I going to get that kind of bad break? Yeah. But the fact that you almost expect the bad break tells you that it was a bad putt. Does yeah. that make sense? Like, of course Absolutely. he made it, yeah. but you know you can't make it like that. Yeah, it's, it's in your control. And, and as a player, it's easy to just make the excuse, oh, you got to spit out, you feel bad for yourself kind of deal. Oh, and it is. That's what it is. Of course, you can feel bad about it. I mean, he put it perfectly. But you know a small lapse of concentration and not hitting it precisely where you want, that yeah. can differ. So this whole... Um, kind of a flaw, honestly, like in the in the thing. I mean, we're throwing over another fairway right now. There, that's that's whole, eight, whole nine's fairway that we're, we're throwing over. Yeah, and it makes it kind of a really, really easy shot for yeah. if you have a really powerful forehand which i don't have a powerful forehand so i can't yeah. go wide and high like that but it's a fairly easy shot for you guys yeah i who, think so who do have it so especially rick, for rick and eagle right here i mean that's just like they just smooth those shots out there even though from 50 it's so hard so you can see the basket is almost at its feet there and so for him to be able to drop that that low and the basket's actually low in the ground anyway mm -hmm. it's an interesting green kind of like the green Ooh, great run from Gavin. Just like like we said before, this is a newly redesigned Harry Myers, and it's just it's just not quite ready for a large scale event like this. I saw this almost collide on this hole, actually. Yeah, that's unfortunate. But this is very fortunate. This is beautiful. Great looking putt, right on the stripe. Good putt there. Yeah, I saw handful of spit outs in my round as well from different people on the card yeah yeah when the baskets are older like you were saying the chains get a little a little loose and a little worn and and you'll see those chains just open up and the disc just goes right off the pole hole seven 367 foot par three there's a couple different options on this one. We're going to fly through this right gap right now. There's also that low gap. When the, when the ground's dry, you can go for some ground play. Not a lot of danger on this one, but a, a pretty tough, tough two. Yeah, you'll see a lot of people, if they have the power, they'll go high flex shot around to try to kind of crash by the by the basket and this is a this is also a good play it looks like he's turned it over a bit but if you have the power on the sidearm the gap's a bit bigger and the green kind of plays um a, it's favorable for that type of a skip up the hill yeah um you see eagle he's trying to throw a flex shot through the main gap there and he got through for a makeable putt for him mm -hmm. for sure but um i think this is a really good hole there's a yep. big gap that you can play straight you see those people that's what yeah, he's Ricky's probably aiming, aiming for, that, for that. Yeah. T bird. If he actually beats that he doesn't beat the tree, but yeah. anything that gets around there and then skips up your money. Yeah, and it's it's an interesting shape because you're throwing downhill, but then you finish back uphill. Yeah, it's a definite touchy it's a touchy shot. Yeah. I, I, I really like this hole. Yeah, it's a good one. And it's gonna play quite a bit different today. So I don't know if you guys know, but it's it's monsooning down here in Texas. Spoiler alert. 
But so this entire hillside is just going to be just muddy today. Right. And it might even change a lot of the players uh, shot selection because that forehand's not going to be skipping up toward the pin anymore. Wow. These guys are just, um, the basket is never safe. He from Eagle and Ricky. <laughs> Landon as well. He just hit a big one on the last hole. Let's see what he's got. Looks like he had a, some unobstructed putt there. And this was fortunate to get through to this. <laughs> <laughs> just a magnet, no matter what. I like how he, he was able to kind of give it a softer bid with the nose up there as well. Like we saw... Um, couple holes ago he gave it a really strong bid no nose up and then he's able to kind of switch the nose angle for his you know style of putt that's really hard to do gavin showing tremendous touch with the sidearm to get it that close as well we didn't kind of touch base on that yeah that was a nice up and down kind of a similar shot that we just had in hole eight par three 372 feet it's interesting because this it's hard to tell, but there is a slope right to left here, mm -hmm. big time. So, and there's also right to left wind. Yep. So really it's favoring a sidearm that's coming in and skipping and holding straight. If you're throwing a backhand, you're gonna have to take on these four guardian trees on the right, which is super difficult, or throw a flex shot over everything, so. Yeah, you gotta pick a gap, and the gap is like all the way at the pin. It's 340 feet away, so. Hitting those gap and hitting it low with that angle that you were talking about, pretty difficult shot. Sure, like you can hit the gap like Landon just threw a great shot, but unfortunately he skipped too far left because he, you know, it's just a fast screen. We see Eagle hit those guardians. Yeah, and Eagle was actually throwing mid. That's impressive. And Rick's going for like the overstable kind of flare make sure it keeps it low a little too turned over he's still gonna have a look though and he's been all over it yeah this is actually playing pretty tough because of that win this looks money so absolutely get low, money. Get past the cluster get the skip and that is so hard to do to have the disc with that angle come through at a at the low gap that he had and then have the soft touch to be able to land really close. I mean, that was very impressive. This kid's good. Yeah, beautiful shot by Gavin. You can see why he put down some numbers at this course during the AM weekend and made it happen. I mean, there's a lot of good advanced players in Texas, a lot of aspiring players, and Gavin's definitely one of them. Landon has a kind of a tough straddle putt. Yes. Very good. Nice That's birdie. Great pickup. Might even take the box. Definitely taking the box. Ooh, got poked. <laughs> he said it too. All right. Fresnel. Jamie Espinoza. Nolan Greider. The Look Texas at Tornado. Newton, four through four. California kid? Yep. Nick Newton. Is he leading after round one? I don't know. Can't be giving away spoilers like that. <laughs> I'm such a rookie. Hold nine, <laughs> par five. <laughs> Eight, 858 feet. This one's sweet. This is sweet. This is such a good hole. There... There's a monster Annie route on this hole, like a legendary route. You can go up over huge Annie. I really hope to see a couple of these players attack it. Is there a Mando now? That There's Mandos in the bowl, but okay. you can go high Annie and get down to the bowl. Gavin's actually taking a high route, and he's... I didn't even know you one. could do... I, I just assumed you couldn't anymore. Yeah. Just because of those other tee pads shot. and stuff, but no, I you guess... you still can, okay. yeah. Yeah, there's no Mando. But there's a lot of different options. This is a great looking shot from Gavin. If you get this one in the right position, you can actually play it for a three. Right. So, so he takes like the the traditional low route kind of kind of straight. Eagle's definitely doing eagle things here. What he has right there that looks like the FD two, but that would be insane. That needs to come out. 
Okay. I mean, that's fine. Yeah. So you you see the big Anheuser, mm-hmm. you see the sidearm straight. There's also a little route if you want the Eagle kind of right. Through that gap. Yeah, yeah they it. cleared that gap up. And that's the one that I like to take. I, I bet you do, yeah. I like going down that little tube right there. Nice. And it's really a beautiful shot. This this is just one of the prettier holes on the course. And, you know, we don't have a lot of elevation in Texas. And this one's just fun to be able to rip one downhill. And it changed, you know, a bit from the other hole. But I think it's a better hole now. It's the one, like, a lot of people are debating that, which, what, um, excuse me, whether it's better or not. Mm-hmm. But I like it. I like it better because the tee shot now gets rewarded a bit more. Yeah, whereas you could have a great tee shot on the previous hole and you could just out of position completely. Or have a great shot, throw another great shot, and plinko into the woods. Yeah. It was such Absolutely. a tight up shot. So when you're in the position right here, this is right where you want to be, right where Rick's drive landed. And you can either go low through that gap right there where his disc fell, or you can try and go high if you if you have the power. Looks like he didn't have the power. Yeah, it looks like he didn't get it high enough. And I mean, it takes all of 500 feet to get to the pin from there. Right. 500 feet on Heiser. So, a player like myself, I'm I'm definitely trying to go low. Gavin and Landon and Rick are actually all up on the hill in position for their birdie four. Okay. Yeah, a couple. Couple looks at birdies. Nobody really in that much trouble right now. Landon for three. Yeah, but that's a, a, it leaked a little bit deep, but should be fine. This is Ricky for eagle three. Oh, wow, and that, that one just stayed in the air. Normally, you start to see those drop about halfway, and that one, yeah, maybe, maybe he just got the nose up too much. Maybe a bad re- wind read as well. He mm-hmm. usually has that nose down, so yeah. his putters have a bit more height than than people. Than, <laughs> than, than, yeah, than people. <laughs> than, <laughs> than anyone, really. Yeah. I mean, maybe Greg putts higher. But, yeah, for sure. But, That's a good point. Yeah, the putt is crazy. I mean, this one's probably getting up over the... No. And then... So we said he puts high, and then right there he just kind of like stabs that one. You know that yeah. one never got over chain or. He was probably worried about height. that spit out on that other hole. Kind of a little more concentrated yeah. and popped it low. Yeah, there's no question that when you when you have one pop out on you that you start thinking about it. Yeah, so we actually there were only two threes on this hole all that, day. Yep. During the first round. So it's playing Garrett pretty good. Garrett Gerthy and Paul Ulibarri. Nice one, Paul. Thank you. What you, you went up the right gap, and then did you go low on your second one? Yep. How far was the putt? About 40 feet. Sweet. Did you step it? I did. Nice. That's going to do it. Nice.